the garage. Strange day yesterday for Shane Van Gisbergen. Third in the championship so far this year. Got a pole, got a race victory, but weird day. Uh, rear anti roll bar appeared to be jammed at one stage, had a vibration, had a comms issue, just a whole bunch of little glitches that ended up with him in 11th. Yeah, I'm not sure if he'd, uh, if he'd pulled his earplugs out a bit viciously one day, uh, so he had a little bit of an issue there. We had a, um, a steering vibration issue. Uh, which we think we know about uh, why and have, have put that right, uh, which affected his day. And the rear anti-roll bar was just, um, it was selectable, but it wasn't um, selectable easily it wasn't enough. Smooth, right? Yeah, it wasn't smooth for him. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes they can be problematic in a straight line, which is the last thing you want. You can never actually move the thing in the corner. Well, he moves them so much anyway yeah. that you, you, you need a, a high-speed slow-mo camera to see what he's doing in that know, part he of the loses car. Us. His arms will end up in a tangle one day. Right. And you pluck the splitter off the front of it yesterday early in the session as well. Did you have a bit of flutter down the bottom no, of the we straight? Just, we weren't sure where the vibration was coming from. Oh, OK, that's all that was. So expectations now today. Practice three coming up, 30 minutes for everybody. An opportunity to do what for you two? Uh, yeah, try and tune where you are in, um, in terms of uh, qualifying pace, really. We think we think we know where we'd go race setup wise but qualifying Watch pace your back. Is, run over by your own car. is what uh, is what we need to try and just find a last little bit. Jamie was very close yesterday, uh, but we're not quite there, so we've got to try and find a little bit more this morning. It's pretty heartening when you look at the spread across the field at the moment. You and I were talking off camera just prior to the interview. Isn't this a great place to race? And what a wonderful place for us all come in June. And once again here at Hidden Valley and everybody from Northern Territory, major events, done an amazing job. It presents beautifully, doesn't it? It. They do a really good job each time of raising their own bar in terms of presentation. Great to be here. We're about to get run over, Roland. Thank Thanks you. for having a chat at a busy time. So, practice three, getting underway now. 30 minutes is the journey around here. And as you heard Roland Dane tell us from the Red Bull Holden racing team, the object of the exercise now is to get some valuable data just prior to getting ready for the Arbor Hall qualifying session coming up later on today. Reiterating what happened yesterday, if you missed our coverage on Fox Sports, Scott McLaughlin was the fastest from his teammate Fabian Coulthard. There was just 0.14 of a second between them. Jamie Wincup was in third position on a 6-2. Chas Mostert next, David Reynolds, Lee Holdsworth, Anton Di Pasquale, who qualified third here on Saturday last year. James Courtney, who's still trying to get rid of push across the middle of the corner, was next, followed by Cam Waters, Mark Winterbottom, and Shane Van Gisbergen, as I mentioned a few moments ago, who's having a few wars out there, but hopefully he's on top of that today. So, thanks to Virgin Australia, let's have a look at our racetrack. And this is a beauty. We are more than 3,700 kilometres from our last venue in Benella, Winton Motor Raceway, northeast of Victoria. We're at the top end in Darwin, the capital of the Northern Territory. What a great place to race. And our track, Hidden Valley Raceway, 2.8 kilometres around here, 14 corners, and one of the hallmark locations is the front straight. 440 metres down to turn one. It's about 800 plus metres from one end to the other. Wide open throttle here for a long period of time. Depending on the wind direction, the cars will achieve around about 270 kilometres an hour when they get to the braking area down at Turn 1. And there's a whole bunch of hot spots and passing opportunities around this racetrack. We've seen trouble at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It sounds like a successive number call, doesn't it? Seven's an odd corner because it just rolls endlessly to the right. There's a little join in the road on the approach to Turn 10 that if you lock a brake and make a mistake, making it to the fence on the outside at 10 is very easily done. So we watch with caution there to see whether everybody gets through today. Yesterday we had no troubles at all. And then it's a short sharp run down a hill, a very gentle hill to the final turn at 14, where it's critical to touch the apex perfectly there and get the throttle advanced at exactly the right moment. Every millimetre counts and then if you get off there cleanly, you don't slide the car too much, you'll achieve your top speed. So the temperature here at the moment is already in the high 20s, but what we will find later in the day is that the road surface temperature will come up. So what they have to be careful of Mark Scape, as you know only too well, is you can't afford to tune too much to these conditions because things will change later on today. So you've got to combine your data and your knowledge and what you sense, feel and record between what happened yesterday and what's going to happen this morning, which makes it all the more intriguing for us. Good morning to you. <laughs> Good morning, Neil. That's exactly right. And although this looks like a reasonably basic layout, it's far from that. The explanation that you just provided about the track itself, it has more undulation, more rise and fall, more characteristics of bumps and curbs than you think. And then you put those atmospheric conditions into the mix. 
track temperature, wind direction makes a huge difference at this place down this big, long straight, 900 metres, second longest straight of the year. And when you put all that into that mix and you try to sort yourself out on what tyre quality you've got, you have to be very careful about the way that you tune the car in accordance with the day's heat and UV. The UV later in the day as we get into the serious part of our weekend and we start qualifying later on, the UV will be up and the track will effectively be slower. So one of our great things that we've been doing this year is we've been putting people, we've had Craig Lowndes, we've had James Courtney, we've had Scott McLaughlin, and now we've got Gregory Murphy down at Turn 1. Good morning, Murph. Hello, Scopey. It's pretty good down here, mate. I've been out here before, and uh, just watching what these cars are doing at the top speed, about 270 k's an hour uh, for you, Crompo. The wind is blowing pretty much directly onto the nose, so these guys are going very, very late under brakes, and I'm just interested to look at the way these cars are pitching and who's got the really, really good control. Already straight away, we talked yesterday about David Reynolds, and he is very, very smooth and very, very late going into here. And again, we'll also pick up on probably the two shell cars at some stage when they're out here. And I saw Fabian Coulthard before. We talked yesterday about his left foot braking technique. And I watched the two cars, him and Scott McLaughlin, before come down here. And the difference between those two cars is substantial. Already we've had a car go off. Uh, it was just James Golding before on the last lap go straight ahead. He had to do a Yui and come back on the circuit. We saw that a lot yesterday as well. So uh, it's an intriguing spot. Just watch there, Will Davison going in very, very smooth on the braking. The way his car's pitching looks very good going into turn one. Thanks, Greg. Greg Murphy, Rihanna Creed, Andrew Jones, Mark Larkin working hard for us in pit lane. And in this instance, down on the outside of turn one, are they fireproof Nomex shorts you're wearing there, Gregory? Um, I should have thought more about that. There's a lot of sort of uh, little insects down here, mate, and, and I might, they might not look this good yeah. when I get back. <laughs> one of those insects is actually right alongside me now. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. That's not a nice way to start the day. Oh, I'm only squaring off for yesterday, so... <laughs> Let's focus on what's going on on the racetrack at the moment. 24 minutes and 55 seconds remain in this session. And so far, the fastest is Anton Di Pasquale, who's got form at this racetrack already. Rick Kelly, car number 15, Castrol Racing. Unhappy yesterday, couldn't get the balance right in the car. You've got an update? Well, I'm disappointed with them, to be honest, because Simona was quite quick in the first practice yesterday. But when you look at last year, car 15 did a 6-5 in the first session, a 6-2 in the second session, and yesterday afternoon, Rick Kelly only did a 6.9 in practice two. So he's significantly slower year on year, which you wouldn't expect based on the development of the car and the way that those cars have performed at this location over the, over the years. So Michael Caruso used to be strong here. And as I said, this lady, Simona Di Silvestro, was really good in the first session yesterday. And started her lap earlier than everybody else in the second session. And then what happened was she burnt the first nutrition out of those tyres, trying to think of the right word, couldn't find it. And then that hurt. When she got clear track and went again, there really was no, no more grip left in those tyres in relative terms because you only get one shot round here. So it's going to be a very intense Armour um, qualifying session for the pole later on today for race number 15 of the championship. 120 k's of racing. McLaughlin and Van Gisbergen in a pit lane tangle, but they managed to resolve it between them. Jamie Wincup coming in as well. This is what it looked like from Shane's vantage point. So <laughs> he had to avoid, break, turn. Scotty got away with it. Uh, both guys are well on top of their cars and what's going on in the pit lane. So they managed to sort it out. This car was very impressive yesterday. They spent time earlier in the day just on a scruffy set of tyres. They only used the one set of tyres and understeer was the word from both sides of the garage. Scotty ended up putting together a very impressive lap and Fabian on the whole was reasonably happy. He had a little throttle issue where he was catching the throttle pedal in practice one. It pretty much ruined the session, which meant that he was 30 minutes effectively behind his teammate, but he says he made some good gains. They're going to have a couple of swings at different things now in practice three to see what the cause and effect may be. But as we were both talking earlier in that conversation when I first threw to you, Mark, it's, it's such a challenge to play pin the tail on the setup donkey to be able to make sure that whatever you guess or you learn in this session and you apply later on in the day doesn't actually run you into a bad position later on in the afternoon when the racing conditions will be even different again. Well, that's right. And it does lead you down the garden path because when you first go out, the tyres are good. After two or three laps, the tyres are no good. <laughs> so you've actually got to try to predict 
what happens with the car. And a lot, there's a lot of driver feel, there's a lot of innate feedback that comes from the driver that's not necessarily to do with the stopwatch. It doesn't actually give you the yield that you think, Lucker. Uh, Neil, I was listening with interest to you talking to Roland Dane earlier, and Mark, you're right. So these guys have gone straight out of the gate, straight back in, so they're obviously out of the window and putting rear springs in this car, and there goes Jamie Wink up behind me, rear sprinter set of springs straight away in that car. So straight out and straight back in, major change. And it was interesting yesterday because Shane described making many changes, throwing lots of different things at it, and really not seeing any yield on the stopwatch. A practice start here for Jamie Wincup. So I spoke to Roland Dane about this just prior to the start of the session. He's trying to find happiness with the bite point on this clutch. That was better. That was a nice start, actually. They'll be measuring the 0 to 100 and a bit of driver feedback on that as well. So that looked pretty clean. Yesterday he did one right in front of our commentary box here. There's um, Greg watching him in the run into turn one. And uh, he didn't get away cleanly at all. So high sensitivity was Roland's description there. So, yeah, so Shane yesterday, a whole bunch of changes on 97. Said it changed the feel of the car, but not what the stopwatch said. So Will Davison said something similar to me earlier in the day as well, that you've really got to make your choice. You don't necessarily affect the overall pace of the car, but you've got to make a choice about what you want as a trait in the car that you then decide to race with. That's right. You just wanted to look at the distinct uh, differences between the two shell cars. So that was uh, Fabian Coulthard coming through. You can see how aggressive the dive is when he jumps on the brakes. Again, that left foot, uh, left foot braking. I think uh, Scott might have gone to the lane, unfortunately, because the difference between the two is, is enormous, uh, just the way those cars pitch under brakes. So we'll hopefully get another shot of that at some time if Scott comes out again soon and just uh, highlight those differences. But very late on the brakes down here, guys. Very, very late. Hey, Murph. No one at this stage seems to be totally different than anybody else, but there's still a lot of cars going off at, at Turn 1 and end up the exit of Turn 1. Hey, Murph, just the, the quick one was, remember the Commodores had a lot of drama down there with buffeting last year? We're just seeing a slow-mo right now of Fabian Coulthard and the way that that car pitches is the comment that you were making before, and it does pitch right to the bottom and actually bottoms yeah. out in those over those little bumps. But have a look at Simona's car because that front spoiler was buffeting really badly on her car earlier. Yeah, copy that. Will uh, is she on the track at the moment, just, boys? Just come out now. Okay. Back in the garage for Scott McLaughlin. He's done the fastest time, a 6.1 from Di Pasquale, a 6.5. Mostert's done a 6.7. Holdsworth's done a 6.8. That replay shot looking at the braking performance of Fabian's car down at Turn 1 is interesting because really over the years, and here it is again, and you know this, Mark, the trigger visually for the driver is that yellow line that merges to the racetrack edge, and it's been that way pretty well for donkeys. And there almost it is. So exactly. almost parallel to that join point is about the braking trigger down there, and that's really the visual reference that the drivers use when they're getting down to Turn 1. Ryan Story in the garage. Tim Sindrick, the president of Team Penske, is here this weekend off the back of the IndyCar race in Texas last week. Uh, prior to that at uh, Detroit. Murph, go ahead. Yeah, so we'll just see Simona coming down here. She's behind one of her teammates. So if you can see the second car on the line here. Yeah, there is. You see significant flutter in, the, in that front splitter. And now it'll be interesting to see if she gets past Rick and if it's different if she's in front or if she's getting turbulence off the front of that car. That's the 150 metre board just in front of me. So they're well inside that. It's probably 125, 130 sort of metres when they get on the brake pedal. So there's a couple of issues at play here. One is the actual bar itself and how it's been constructed, but also ride height can play a role in this because it pressures and then depressurises. Once it starts the cycle, the oscillation begins very hard to stop it. So we've seen all three brands over the last 12 or so months suffer from this. But that was very evident there, and it makes the aero balance of the car awkward, obviously. So it's also the mounting. So there's three elements. It's the construction of the front air dam and how the floor sits in the front spoiler, plus the ride height that you just mentioned, and then the way that the thing's mounted. So once it actually hits and upsets the mounting, then the oscillation of the downforce underneath, plus the forces over those bumps, make it do that flutter. So that buffeting of the front floor will be affecting the downforce. Here it comes again, have another look. Yeah, it's quite bad, it's quite pronounced. So they're sitting at the moment in ninth in Simona's case and 15th in Rick Kelly's case, I beg your pardon, 17th in Rick Kelly's case. Uh, Andre Heimkarten is currently in 10th. Gary Jacobs down in 22nd in car number three, Mark Larkham. No, Marco's not quite ready for us. We'll come back to him when he is. 
So McLaughlin's still in the garage. Mostert's in the garage. Wincup is also in the lane. Gary Jacobs just uh, Jacobson has just put in his best lap, moved up a couple of spots. So interesting. McLaughlin did a 6.08 to be the fastest yesterday. 6.11. So probably you, you would think he used the same set of tyres just to get a day-on-day -day read. So if he did a 6.08 and that was a brand new tyre, you've taken a little bit of, you call it nutrition, but a little bit of the goodness out of, is goodness a word? Yeah. Um, when you've had one run on a green tyre, they're never quite as good. So that road to tyre, he's still done a 6.11 the next day. So we'll try to work out for you, we'll try to actually get that information to make sure that's correct. But that's, that's probably what you would do, and that actually indicates with a 0.4 of a second lead over everybody else, that they're in good shape. One of the storylines this weekend is unfortunately Richie Stanaway's neck issue that became obvious prior to the Winton event. Flared again just prior to this event, so Chris Pither has jumped into car number 33. It's part of the endurance squad for the Boost Mobile Gary Rogers motorsport team. So uh, he's climbed again into car number 33 to get that job done. Here's Will Davison. He's currently sitting in seventh position in the Milwaukee Tools entry. There's Gary Jacobson, Rebel Dot Club, uh, Nissan. Ooh. Runs very wide. He only just barely got it arrested there to actually pull it up. And I think it's also got the same disease as Simona's car. It's actually fluttering in the under tray on the run into turn one. Greg? Yeah, you're absolutely right there, Cropo. It does. It's uh, about the same sort of amount of flutter as what it's got in uh, uh, Simona's car as well. So, but he's, he looks quite good coming in here. It doesn't seem to be affecting them too much in their stopping, although he did run wide, as you noticed there before. But uh, they're actually very fast in a straight line. I think um, one of the Nissans that might be Heimgartner is the quickest in the speed trap down here. Scott Sinclair, our man on the ground, Greg Murphy. He actually spotted Simona DC went through, fluttering with the front splitter. Looks like Andre Heimgartner is about to change one here, so that might be an issue across some of the other cars. Yeah, and I think Andre just smashed the kerb, so he re he just reported that he smashed the kerb, so he wanted to dive. So have a look, but I did see that. Um, with Simona's one, so we'll check that out next time, and it's obviously not ideal. And Gary Jacobson, he seems to have some as well. Uh, I haven't heard or I haven't seen that one, but again, we'll have a look at when he come in, because it's pretty severe, so uh, obviously to be avoided, and uh, we'll look to fix it. It's not something we've seen, so we'll, uh, we should be able to get on top of it pretty quick. Just on yesterday, your car's obviously not into that Q2. Disappointing, given your results here previously. You're across the four cars. Are you guys experiencing the same issues? Yeah, look, it's a well-known, um, you know, well-documented that the cars change significantly. So we're, we're learning on the fly. Yesterday was was not good. We, we know that. We've got to fix it. Today's maybe looking a frac fraction better at the moment, but uh, I think once everyone puts their head we we'll get a better idea. Thanks, Ryan. Chas Mostert to pass the pit lane now. Super cheap auto. Ford Mustang. A couple of other milestones this weekend for Rick Kelly. It's his 150th round for Tim Slade, likewise. And as you detailed in the host studio earlier in the day, and Jess was in conversation about this as well, Mark, no driver in the history, and it's our 22nd visit to this location, has ever been able to pull off the Triple Crown, which is quite extraordinary given there's been various periods of complete domination. This is another one of the stories this weekend. Jack Smith will be the 25th car in the field contesting as a wild card. Good to have him back there. Youngster who's finding his way in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. 120 k's of racing to come this afternoon. 200 kilometres tomorrow. 150 points for both of those races. And it's a 244 point spread between Scott McLaughlin and his teammate Fabian Coulthard. With Shane Van Gisbergen in third. David Reynolds in fourth. After the last event at Winton, Jamie Wincup moved up a spot. Then there's quite a number of good battles going on in the back end of the top ten as well, and we'll detail those for you through the coverage over the weekend. It's quite a difficult piece of road, that one there, where Jack Smith was just negotiating. A little slide there off of turn five, but can I have a look at that right and left, that little roller coaster at about 215 k, and you've got to try to slow it down to about 95 kilometres an hour, get back to second gear, hard to get the car stopped, easy to lock the rear wheels, we saw Wink up off there yesterday. What's your favourite bit of the racetrack? Here, right there, I, I like that spot, yeah. it's, there's a lot of art in this bit isn't it? And a lot of different ways you can go about it, what, what about you? Highly complex, uh, love the run through five, into the valley, out of the valley and through seven, just yeah. com you know, a lot of stuff to do, a lot of workmanship involved in getting that right. And there's a guy that's applying it beautifully at the moment, Anton Di Pasquale, who's done an outstanding job again this year. He's 13th in the championship in car number 99 for Penrite Oils. Got on the second row of the grid here on Saturday last year. He stalked his teammate yesterday, and he's currently sitting in second position. He's only 0.4 of a second behind the Blockman. 
very cool camera mounted on that car. Also, and we saw some images of that yesterday in the practice one and two coverage. Just parked up underneath the car near the drive line and just behind the starter motor. You can see the just near the pen right side on the left hand side of the screen there is the starter motor for the back of the engine. And if you're a big fan of pitch and roll, have a look at this. Have a look at this. <laughs> because it, even though these cars look highly planted on the road and gripped up with the Dunlop tyres on the car, they still move around a lot. So watch the air gap disappear under brakes into the hairpin at turn six. Then the roll inside of the car is unweighted. Then it pitches backwards under load. More than 600 horsepower being applied. Just fan the throttle gently through seven. More roll again. This time all the weight's going to the left. So look at the amount of movement in the car. And this is what it's all about. Controlling the mass of that vehicle with the anti-roll bar, the springs and the dampers in the car front and rear. Controlling the mass of, in relative terms of what's a pretty heavy race car by global standards. Looking after the tyre and the energy that's placed through those four footprints in all four corners of the car is critical, particularly at this racetrack. Chief Executive Officer, Supercars Australia, Sean Seymour in conversation with Barry Ryan from the Penrite Oils team. So we were just looking at his car and here's the other car from the squad. So David Reynolds has had tremendous success here. Car number nine. And where's he sitting at the moment, MS? He's down in 10th position. Just see the way he negotiated at the top of the hill then, Neil. He actually drives it out and around, takes the steering off the car. So when we were just talking about our favourite pieces of road, some drivers, lounge used to be a special for driving it very narrow and making it more of a corner at the top of the hill. Dave drives it almost out and around the corner and takes all the steering load off it. So there's, as I said, there's a lot of technique in that part of the racetrack. Nice view of the Shell V Power Racing Mustang under brakes there, but that's not a nice view for Fabian Coulthard. So that's a couple of kilometres an hour too quick down there and he's run wide. So as they say in sport and in motor racing, you're only as good as your last outing. And for David Reynolds, last outing here resulted in a victory on Sunday in 2018. So that's the view from Fabian's car. He's probably put a little mark on that inside front tyre on the run down there and he just glides it back on with garbage all over those tyres. Have to be a little bit gentle now for the next several corners. He may even come back into the lane. These guys were quite impressive. In fact, the first three cars straight away, when they all rolled out yesterday in practice one, straight away it was McLaughlin, Reynolds and Winkup. And often, I, I know this sounds very weird, but as soon as you drive cars out of the truck and you, you land them on the track and you get a balance and you've got reasonable tyre quality, you get the best form guide of the weekend. And don't discount the Commodores being quite strong here to take it to the Mustangs because Wing Cup and Reynolds were very fast immediately. Reynolds is currently second. And yesterday, remember, it was McLaughlin, Coulthard and Wing Cup. Now, if you're wondering why you're not seeing Shane Van Gisbergen out of there, he's actually just out there. He's just been out of the car, just asking Roland Dane. They've just fired another front anti-roll bar into that car, which is quite a major change. They're still working on it now. Shane's just got back in the car. But, Niels, goes to the point you were talking about earlier, the critical nature of being able to have that working effectively. Yeah, and uh, disturbing number of changes going on on that side of the garage this weekend because by the time you get to practice three, they would hopefully have been through enough of their different setup regimes to go, yep, that's the one we're landing on now, we'll refine it. So there's still some pretty big changes being thrown at that car, obviously. That'll be a frustration. Now that's a nice job by Simona. She's just moved up on camera there into position number six. She's done a six, seven. How'd that compare to yesterday's numbers? Almost three tenths faster. So that's a good job. Yeah. So she was hurt, you, that's correct, the way that she was put out of the traffic yesterday hurt her run anyway, but that's almost three tenths faster than yesterday. Good job. She was fast, remember, she was third in practice one for a while yesterday, it ended up, she went back to sixth, I think, just let me check. Yes, yeah, so, oh, sorry, yes, yeah, she was sixth at the end of practice one, so her pace from the time that she rolled out was very impressive. She had a very good run in Western Australia, a season best so far. She came home in 12th on both Friday night and Saturday night. The best result at this location has been 17th in years gone by, so this is event number three for her at Hidden Valley. She has Mostert's dad, Eddie. It's number, one, number one fan. Bit of an injury going at the moment, Eddie. He's actually hurt himself, fell over, and got a bit of a wing injury. Affecting his beer drinking this weekend. <laughs> so, Mostert at the moment 
is sitting in seventh position. He's done a 6-7. And uh, yesterday, he did a 6-3 on the fresh tyre for position number four. And that's uh, the voice of Adam DeBore in the background talking to him. So that's a great shot looking along that front straight. Different people measure it in different ways. A lot of the teams talk about it in terms of wide open throttle distance, but whatever you decide to measure it by, it's long <laughs> and it's fast <laughs> and it's fun. <laughs> well, that's right. So the apex to apex is 905 metres. The wide open throttle is 805 metres. So, yeah. But it's sort of 265k with a headwind. Yeah. <laughs> and then, it, that's right. And then, and then you've got to decide are you an early or a late apex person? <laughs> so I've had. All of a sudden you find yourself in these inane debates about how long it is. All I know is it's long and it's fast. <laughs> so Mostert at the top of the circuit. This is the spot that, apart from the couple of options you've got for where you place the car around there, I mentioned it when the track map came up right at the top of the practice session. You've got to be super careful there on Turn 10. There's been plenty of skilled drivers who have ended up in the fence up there because the gap between the edge of the road and the tyre wall up there is minuscule and a heartbeat, you're actually in it. Plenty of people have made that mistake. So that's uh, speed trap numbers there on the left in case you're wondering. So a little bit of a headwind there today. Uh, it's a bit more to the southeast than it was yesterday. So 266 k's, I think was the number that I saw for Shane Van Gisbergen down there. Um, in the background, you may have also seen another yellow Holden Commodore as well. So. Perkett this weekend with uh, Dunlop colours back on that car. Makes it a little challenge inside the garage at Brad Jones Racing because the Freightliner Racing entry of Tim Slade, also yellow. In fact, that's Tim in the background following Chaz at the moment. So we've got five and a half minutes remaining. Uh, McLaughlin's going back out onto the circuit, just past our commentary box. He's still the fastest driver on a one minute 6.1. And if you go back to the record book, Mark, and have a look at who's done what here, Percat that I made mention of just a few moments ago as Scotty warms up a set of tyres. That doesn't take long here. Uh, <laughs> Percat's done a 1 minute 6.5 for the uh, lap record last year. Quali record also achieved last year by McLaughlin on 5.6. And Scott McLaughlin's got the practice record on a 5.5. He did that in 2017 in the Falcon. Remembering this weekend that the orange light you can see under the, the number 17 Tonight's firstly, the orange number is the leader of the championship, 244 points clear of his teammate. And the orange light denotes the Dunlop Super Soft Tyre, the softer variant tyre that we're using this weekend. It so I'm making like a, he's uh, putting a... He's, he's having a go here. Now, here's another tyre. Yeah, well, he was looking as yeah. though when he left the pit lane that he was in full qualifying rehearsal simulation. So. I'm making an internal policy change, Mark. You can adopt yeah. it if you wish. But yes. For now, for me, from now on, there's a soft and a hard tyre. Okay. All this soft and super soft, it just gives me a headache. There's a softer one and a harder one. Join me if you wish. <laughs> All right. Well, as long as you go with me on yesterday's P2 being called qualifying zero. <laughs> okay. Do right. deal. All right. But done. Right. <laughs> it's been recorded. Now, let's see what McLaughlin can produce here. We'll get a reference on his lap in just a moment. It's car number 14, Tim Slade. Freightliner Racing Alliance Trunk Parts Holden Commodore and Tim's just come up nicely 6-5 so they've made a decent game there whether that's tyres or set up or a combination of both. He's now in position number four. Three and three quarter minutes remain now in practice three. Next time you see the cars it'll be for armour or qualifying. Three parts. Some of the drivers yesterday those that made the top ten have already earned a position straight into qualifying two. Detail more about how that works shortly. Both the Penrite cars are on exit here as well, Larko. So, Neil, as you were talking about those Dunlop tyres on uh, Scotty's car, I was actually having a really close study of them. I thought for a second they were new. They weren't. They actually did a couple of laps yesterday. So they're near as new, but not new. They've got a heat cycle in them, so he will be giving it a crack, but at the same time, not consuming a set of new Dunlops. Well done. And he's done the best middle sector time. He was sitting on a 6-1, and he didn't quite make it in the end, Larko. So that lap that you just caught the back end of, he did a 1 minute 6.2. So he was just a whisker slower in sector 1 than his own personal best. He was faster than himself in sector 2, and uh, he was a little slower than himself in sector 3. Now I do have a headache. <laughs> Lee Holdsworth. Nice job yesterday for Lee. Off the back of a very good round at Winton, which was a bit of a breakthrough for him in the Botlo Tickford Ford Mustang. And I sat down and had a chat with him earlier in the weekend. We'll run that for you during the weekend. But um, I think he's finally begun to 
understand what's required to get the most out of these cars. Stop shaking your head. That's how my brain works. So uh, pretty happy with the car. Jump straight out of the box. He was hoping to make it a little bit better in driving traction and uh, just gently trying to make changes. And one of the other points about these cars, and there he is coming out of turn one, is that little things make big disturbances if you're not careful. So you've got to, when you tweak, you've got to be careful that you don't over tweak and then suddenly box yourself into a corner that the stopwatch yawns at. LeBron's just done a great job. He's moved up into seventh position in the truck assist Holden Commodore. Good gains for him last time out as well at Winton. Fabian Coulthard up into tenth uh, position. McLaughlin and Slade have both parked up. We've got just over 90 seconds remaining in practice three now. Andre Heimgartner, nice work. One minute, 6.5. That's back to the pace they had last year. So 6.5 last year. 6.5 and I'm doing a 6.2 so that's much closer in terms of relative performance year on year for Andre. Simona's still uh, trundling along nicely here at the moment. She's 10th, 1 minute 6.7. You detailed yesterday that she's been back to Switzerland yeah. in the recent past. She does a bit of travelling. And what was that lap for? It was a 7 flat, so it was about 3 tenths away from her best. Pippa Scarlett just moved up a spot and displaced Heimgartner as well. So on screen at turn one, Anton is tucked on the totem in behind his teammate David Reynolds. So he clicks with this place, doesn't he? He did very well here last year. Cam Waters just moved up a bunch as well. He's coming to fourth position. Approaching the 30 second mark now of the final practice session for Saturday. Next time up, it'll be Armour All qualifying. Wind Cup up 11 positions now. Third for him on a one minute 6.3. What's Mostert's response here? He's drifted into 13th position. Personal best for him in the first sector. Up three spots to just crack into the top 10. Oldsworth, who has been struggling in qualifying, but said to us earlier in the weekend that he thought the car for one lap was getting better. So that'll be interesting to see how he rolls out of qualifying. Um, we're qualifying today. James Courtney got into the 10 yesterday. I think he ended up seventh by the time that session finished. Eighth, sorry. So he was quite competitive in the Walkinshaw Andretti United Commodore. Here comes Mark Winner on his lot of squat. Have a look at the speedboat effect on that car, how high the front spoiler is, how low the back of the car is. And Frosty comes up 12 spots up to 11. And on board now. Shane Van Gisbergen coming on to the straight. Let's see what this does. Wing Cup does another lap. He did a 6-3 to go to third, then a 6-5 on that lap. Van Gisbergen up nine spots tonight with a 6-6-4. Now, what did he do yesterday? He did a 6-5. Yeah. 6-5-9. So, so not far away. It's probably tyre condition may have gone away. It'd be interesting to see whether or not he got a useful taste out of the change to the anti-roll bar that Mark Larkin reported a few moments ago. So session done. That's practice three. McLaughlin, Reynolds, Wind Cup, checkered flag is out for the entire field. I think everybody's done the job now. So there'll be no change to the order that you can see on screen. For practice three, Bet Easy, Darwin, Triple Crown, McLaughlin, Reynolds, Wind Cup, Deepa Squally, Waters, Heimgartner. That's a very good performance. High Slade, Van Gisbergen, Jack LeBrock inside the top ten, half a second away. On the next page, it's headed by Chaz Mostert, followed by Mark Winterbottom, Will Davison, Simone Di Silvestro, Coulthard down in 15th. So it looks like he might have a bit of a setup battle going there. Rick Kelly, James Courtney, who was searching for turn yesterday, and I'll get an update from him later in the day. Holdsworth, Percat, Jacobson, and then Todd Hazelwood, 1.2 seconds adrift in 25th position. Greg? And a good start for you, David Reynolds, this morning. I was just uh, speaking to Alistair, gave me a little bit of time during that session. I was watching the last lot of changes going on. I said, is this going to be a sort of a quality sim? He said, oh, we're just trying lots of stuff. It's a free session. Yeah. So a good chance being that you're into Q2 to try a few different things. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, then was a free session because it doesn't really mean anything. Where yesterday, practice two kind of meant something. It was the first part of qualifying. So, you know, we couldn't really go really stupid with our setup and try some out there stuff. So that was the session to do it then. And, and what kind of out? Their stuff did you try? Oh, you know, put the front tyres on the back and the <laughs> back tyres on the front. <laughs> That's some really good stuff. But you've got to be pretty happy. The car is clearly good out the gate, again, right up the front of the field. And 
you must be pretty confident, considering you like this place the way you do, to, uh, that it's going to be strong in, in uh, Q2. Yeah, I, I love this joint. Um, the, I think the car was better yesterday. Uh, I don't know whether it was just the tyres we, we had yesterday were a bit better, but um, yeah, we've got to work it out. We tried some stuff then, so we've got to figure out what to select for quality. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. It's fun. Good on you, mate. We'll go and check out with your teammate over here, Anton Di Pasquale, who's doing some hand signals around uh, and using his using his backside to show some oversteer there as well, mate. Um, I love watching all the funny stuff. You forget that you used to do it as a driver yourself. How was uh, that out there, other than the bit of oversteer? <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of oversteer, plenty of understeer, all that stuff. Um, it was okay. We finished in the top bunch, so uh, car's looking pretty good. We've sort of been up there so far all weekend, so um, try and go a bit faster in qualifying again and uh, see where we end up. Yeah, carry on some positivity. I mean, you guys working as we've uh, analysed all the way through the season, the, you know, the speed that's coming the, between the two of you again, the relationship. Uh, how's that crossover this weekend on, on the setups? Uh, yeah, we're doing a little bit different stuff. Um, we're trying to learn some things and sort of see which is better, but they're both going good. So um, sort of just keep tuning what we got and see where we end up. But um, sort of working together and trying to find the best car possible to beat the guys at the front. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks. Fabian Coulthard, uncharacteristically, mate, I've got to say, a little bit off the pace there. Six tenths, as you know, is a mile around here. Um, there's clearly some issues here. What's, what's, what's the problem? I'm actually not too stressed. You don't look too stressed, which worries me. I'm not too stressed. Um, you know, we tried a couple of things. You know, we had a, a good run yesterday in, in P2, so I think we put some tyres on it, we'll be fine. OK, it was interesting because not a lot did use tyres, um, so there's a bit of tyre conservation going on. It's going to play a big part with the Dunlops this weekend, isn't it? Certainly will. Um, obviously hot, ambient, um, history of the tyres being from other rounds and things like that. It's a little bit of an unknown. We weren't wrapped when we run around on these tyres yesterday and put something that was half decent on and went OK, so see how we go. So let's keep it positive for a minute, mate, because that is positive. That's good. I'm glad you've given us that answer. Um, your championship year so far, very, very good, mate. And, you know, you've been a bit unlucky in previous years, but you now have got some momentum. So what's in your head at the moment? Are you race by race, or do you say to yourself each morning, Fabian, I'm a championship contender, because I reckon you are? No, we always go race by race. Um, you know, it's there's a lot, long way to go till November. Um, Enduros are, play a big part of our championship, so see how we fare out of those, and, and then we'll start to you know, assess the championship. But you look happier, mate. You look faster this year. There's, I mean, there's another tenth or two there for sure. You are more comfortable. I can sense it right here now. You're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, no, we are. Uh, you know, team's doing a great job, so you know, we just need to keep focused and um, you know, let the results speak for themselves. Good on you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Andre Heimgartner, if we look at the timesheets, it's a vast difference from the timesheets yesterday. Is that reflective of what was going on in the car for you? Yeah, definitely. We were, um, you know, we had some data that we're looking at and coming here, and we decided to try something very different. And um, we've had to back off a little bit on that and gone to more to what we had before. And um, yeah, seems we've found a uh, found a good ground, but. Um, yeah, you never get too excited unless it's qualifying because then, you know, everyone's on the same tyres. But very positive. Um, you know, I think if we can get the job done today, we should be in the 10, but we've got to go through all the qualifying, so it could be out in the first one, you never know. <laughs> I know yesterday was only practice, but given the results of this team in the, in the, in the past, what was debrief like? Was it, you know, was it really we need to dig deep and, and turn this around? Yeah, definitely. It's never good. I was 16th, I was the highest in the sand, um, so that's, that's never good when you're back there. So, yeah, definitely had to dig deep. Had to change um, a few things. We've all been trying different things to see who can find the, the magic setup, I suppose. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it seems like we've stumbled across something, so hopefully we can learn from that and take that on to quality. Thanks, Andre. Cheers. <laughs> hey, Cam Waters, just uh, squeezed through yesterday into second phase of qualifying. You're just telling me that yeah, it, was, it was hard yesterday. You were uh, probably a little surprised you actually managed to get through. Yeah, we um, had a very disjointed session yesterday. and. Being the knockout qualifying, you can't try too much of the car because if you go the wrong way, you put tyres on, you, you don't make it. So um, we kind of did that a little bit, but um, yeah, lucky to make it through and, and we made really good progress then. Well, you, and I think you got through right at the end as the chicken flag was coming out. So it was a bit of a rush at the end there too. But uh, getting your head right is not that easy when you're under under pressure like that. Yeah, it's not great when you um, you have to push to the line. So you probably take a bit out of the tyre doing that and whatnot. But it is what it is. It's practice and um, we got through. So that was all good. But... Yeah, today it was all about just getting the car kind of where I needed it to be, and I think we made some progress, which is nice. Yeah, and I was just talking to Dave Reynolds about that too. Sort of, they explained it as being a bit of a sort of a free session because you you know you're you're safe. Is that how you guys took that one as well? Yeah, hundred percent. So um, obviously, practice yesterday, you got to not kind of stray too far, so you have a good time and try and make it through. And then, then you can kind of try a few things with the car and, and hopefully get a read and. 
um, yeah, I think we did that, which is nice, and, and hopefully we make it a little bit better for qualifying and catch other guys. Thanks for the info, mate. Thanks, mate. Hey, uh, I'm, I'm down here in the Red Bull garage. It's kind of funny. Oh, here's Shane. He's just popped out of the door here. You've got to put a string on these drivers, I tell you. And, and understandably, they want to get out of the cars, out of their debrief, and they want to get into the cool room. So thanks for hanging around for a chat, right. mate. Appreciate it. We were concerned for you in that session, mate. I saw this a front Eddie roll bar go in there. You are out of the car. Yeah. So you've actually recovered pretty well in the end. Yeah, we're just a day behind. So we made some huge changes overnight and just reversed what we've done. And I haven't been really comfortable with the car, but, um, yeah, back to... Old school sort of way in the car, it's fine, it's really good, but a little bit slow, so day behind, but hopefully we can make some tunes for Quali. We've got an extra run on Quali. Um, yeah, hopefully we can make it better. Shane, so when you say you've not been that comfortable in the car, is that a more generic comment over the last couple of races because we're not seeing you know, the Shane that we know and we want to see Shane we know back in there? Yeah, fair assessment, so hopefully we can get back and, and be comfortable again, you know. But that's part of race cars. Always an evolution, you're always trying to find something and it's working for the next door. You know, James doing really well with it, but it just doesn't suit me. So we need to go back our own way, which is a shame going another way, but it's what suits each other, I guess. It makes it tough. And a quick question, mate, do you like Darwin? Because often, often that, you know, does it suit your style? Do you like racing here? I love the place, but it's just too hot, man. <laughs> It'd be cool to come here for a holiday, but sitting in a 60 degree sauna, it's tough work, but driving race cars, it's still fun, but Man, it's hot. All right, thanks, mate. Appreciate the chat. We'll try and grab a quick one uh, with uh, Jamie Winkup, who's debriefing with the boss here. You can see Roland Dane. I'm sure it's a fairly intense chat. Mark Dutton there, the team manager. I hate running on it. David Couch over here is engineer, so this will be a really quite serious chat. They're talking about turn there. I can say, yeah, I'd hey, I'd we're happy to listen in if you like. Yeah, bollocks. Roland right? says bollocks. We don't want to make you dumber. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> uh, first of all, mate, we watch you do a practice start. There's been a lot of chat there. Chief, you did a great explanation of all the intricacies of getting that right. Yep. Springs and clutch friction and heat and all the rest of it. Yep. Were you happy with the little one you did up there? It looked pretty good. Yeah, I was. Uh, I had two really bad starts at Winton, uh, so we changed the major components yesterday. Uh, did a practice start yesterday, still the same issue where um, you get the bite point, but then there's a real big flat spot and then it really ramps. So um, we just made a small change and it, it was better. It was certainly better. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go into today's race 100% confident, but, um, but I, I think it should be there or thereabouts. And if you go back through history here, mate, at this event and just replay all the starts down into Tour 1, it is a massive part of your day, isn't it? Yeah, massive. massive. That's, why, that's why we're doing practice starts. It's not ideal to do a practice start in practice because it does heat the rear tyres up, but you can lose four spots. It's, it's almost more important than a spring change, you know. So uh, we, we put a bit of effort into it. Fingers crossed it's, a, it's secure. I've just got to get out of my head now for the start and just pretend it's all good and just uh, launch and see what happens. Anyway, mate, we're really loving you inching yourself back into the game. Well done. Great. Thanks. Cheers.